I'm Winnie and I live in Windermere in the Lake District and I'm originally from Congo, Congo Pret Noir in Africa. I grew up in a big family. My mom had, there's eight of us all together and I was the second of the family and we live by the sea. It's a coastal town. So yeah, it was fun. It was really fun living in Pret Noir. We did have TV. So I spent most of my childhood outside in the outdoor. But I never actually appreciated that until I came to England. <laughs> Did you spend quite a bit of time like swimming in the sea? Is that where you first got into swimming? Not at all. Um, although we live by the sea, we were never allowed to swim. We didn't know how to swim. If you go to the sea, you get your ass whooped. <laughs> it was like a taboo. It was dangerous, so we literally never, ever, ever, I mean, even going, like, to go to the, the beach, you have to sneak to go to the beach. We were not allowed. Like, if my parents heard something like that, I would be, like, in deep trouble. When you get to the sea, you see, and we still lots of white people swimming in the sea, but you never see, oh, but you see fishermen and things like that, but you never see a black person swimming. Even in our community, nobody swam. And it's only recently that I discovered my dad could swim. And I didn't know that. He kept that from us because he was probably worried that, you know, if he encouraged it, he'd get in trouble with, you know, with the community and things like that. So no, I didn't swim until I was, I came to England and uh, I didn't swim until I moved to the Lake District. Why was it taboo to go swimming? First of all, most people didn't know how to swim. And then there was a lot of deaths. And those who ventured out, to try and get in the sea, died. I went back home in 2018. There was a wedding in my family. And then the day after the wedding, we heard a brother and a sister drown in the sea. So it's still happening. It's like a huge, huge problem. So yeah, it's really sad. People still don't, don't know how to swim. And I thought it was only an African problem, but I discovered that it's a black problem. Lots of black people can't swim. Even in England, there's still a lot of black people who can't swim. So yeah, I just want to get the word out there and get people swimming. Is it a very dangerous sort of coastline then? Are there lots of like riptides? Yes. Yeah. Okay. yes, yeah. It's really dangerous. Yeah, like you get the biggest waves. I mean, it's beautiful as well, but it's really, really dangerous. What sort of other activities were you involved in? Were you? I used to. Sorry, I'm cutting you. I hope I didn't cut yes, you. I, I used to love, on. love climbing trees. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up literally. There was lots of trees where we grew up, and I used to love climbing trees. You don't just climb the tree for climbing, but you climb to go uh, catch a, a mango or something like that. And also, lots of rain where um, we grew up. I used to make castles with mud. So. Yeah, I just always outside playing. <laughs> it must have been a lot of fun with having like seven other siblings as well to play with. Are you, were you all sort of quite similar in, in age as well? Yeah, and it's a community as well. You, you're always playing with the neighbor's kids. You play with your brothers and sisters, but you also, you know, we all play together, like, you know, getting up to mischiefs and things like that. There was lots of playing, always outside. So when I came to England, it was quite surprising that like, everybody's just inside. <laughs> and so I'm like, whoa, what kind of life is this? You know, it was a bit surreal. When you think back to when you were a little girl, do you remember what you, what you wanted to do when you, were, when you were a grown up? That's the thing, Sarah. For me, that's one of the biggest things I struggle with growing up because I was not academic. So... When everybody was saying, oh, I want to be this, I want to do this, I was just like in the clouds, I was just a dreamer. I just didn't know what I would you know, be of my life. I literally didn't know. School was tough. I got bullied at school. I got bullied by the kids, but I also got bullied by the teachers. School life, I didn't enjoy school. But and my saving grace was when I went to college and then I started learning English. I started going to English class. My dad was really like, he tried his best to get me to understand, you know, maths and French. It's a French colony. So when I discovered English, I realized, because by this point I was thinking, I'm just dumb. My dad, like my poor girl, she just, you know, she just probably just dumb. <laughs> and then I discovered English and I'm like, oh, I get this. I just got the language. 
And you'll see lots of people won't go to English class and they'll say, oh, I'm not going to English class because I'm never going to England. And I'm like, no, I'm going to go to English class because I might go to England. And then the, the English teacher just invested in me. Like he just invested in me. He realized that I liked it and I got it. And I did really well to the point where he approached my dad. He said, you know, your, your daughter is doing really well. And I think you ought to send her to this place. This guy who had like a, I mean, uh, like in a city center where we, we lived. There was this guy who, who went to America who studied English. So he had this small room where he called it the Academy of English. <laughs> so he convinced my dad to send me to this place. And, you know, my dad had to pay and, and take me there and things like that. So, yeah, between my dad and this English teacher, they sent me there. And I literally just got it. I just got the language. I'm like, you know, my dad, like my dad and I would look at each other like, whoa, that's one place where I was thriving. So... My dad just jumped on it and he just invested in me. Like, and then he'll, and my dad started traveling. So every time he traveled, he'd bring me magazine and things like that. I think life, you know, I saw a bit of hope in a way <laughs> that maybe I could make something out of my life. Because in Africa, I'm sure in England as well, academia is everything. Like becoming something, making something of yourself was everything. So yeah. And then, um, I couldn't come to England, but my dad thought, why not go to South Africa? So I went to South Africa. I think 1997, I went to South Africa and I got there. And I remember my dad finding the school for me and um, where I was going to stay. And the, the owner of the school saw how hard it was for my dad to find somewhere safe for me to be. He said, he said, listen, how about your daughter come and live with us? And my dad's like, are you sure? Because this is like a, a white South African guy. Uh, the guy's like, yeah, you just have to pay and, and she'll live with us. So yeah, uh, it's a long story. <laughs> my life is like, <laughs> I'm actually, but yeah, in the end, I ended up in South Africa and uh, South Africa wasn't fun to say the least. But the family, the host family was amazing. And and the English that I wanted, it wasn't the English that I was learning in, in South Africa. It's funny to say, but the accent, I just couldn't get the accent because you had the Afrikaners, you had the Zulu, the Afrikaans. So it wasn't the English, like the clean English that I was listening in tape and watching in movies. So I thought like, no, I have to go either to America or to England. And I came to England. <laughs> Tell us more about, you know, moving over to England. Did you decide to move to Windermere first? Or no, not at all. No. So I moved, you know, by the time I was with my ex, we, we got two girls together. Because when I was in South Africa, my ex joined me in South Africa. And I was like, no, we have to. So we came to England together. And then we went to Manchester. We had my first daughter. And then while, while I was pregnant, I found out he had met somebody else. And I was just devastated. And um, I had this really good friend who lives up in the Lake District. And the relationship was so bad. She's like, Winnie, there's nothing in Manchester for you. Like, literally, this dude is, like, fooling around in, with you. And I don't think it's safe for you to be in Manchester. Come with me. Come live in the Lakes. As I say, Sarah, it's like, it's a long story. But my friend lives in the Lakes District. And she said, uh, why don't you move to the Lake District? You love it. You've... I've been coming to visit my friend back and forth between Manchester and Lake District. And she became like the only support. Bearing in mind, my ex was like my only family in England. All of my family is abroad. When there were problems, my dad had to fly in. My mom would fly in or my sister. You know, everybody was like on high alert. Bearing in mind, I've also suffered from deep depression and all the mental issues I've, I've lived with. So everybody was always on high alert. In December of 2005, I decided to move up here and I've never looked back. <laughs> How did you get into swimming? My house is literally five minute to 10 minute walk from the lake to keep fit I've always run or walked and also because the girls were growing up like summertime in the lake district is spent by this by the lake so because I grew up in Point Noir where we couldn't swim my dream was you know deep down I was always thinking I need to learn to swim 
So when I had my girls, when they were old enough, like I made sure I paid for them to learn to swim. And like every weekend we were in the swimming baths and they would practice the swimming and they practice the swimming. And then when my eldest got to this, the point where she could swim, my youngest one started also, you know, to learn to swim. So I basically made sure both of my girls could swim because I was thinking, you know, if I want to take them back to Africa, these are girls who are born in Britain. They'll probably want to go swim in the sea. And then when they learn to swim or every week, most weekends, who we'll spend it in the baths, like swimming baths. They'll teach me and, and got to the point where I thought, mm, I think I can swim. So one summer we were in Paris and uh, I mean, most, some, some summers, most of our summers when my business hadn't taken off yet, uh, most of my summer would spend them in Paris. And there was one day, it just hit me that both of my girls could swim. I couldn't stay in the, they could, didn't want to stay in the shallow pool with me. <laughs> but, I was too scared to go in the deep end. I'm like, I know how to swim ish now. Like literally self-taught. And the girls taught me as well. And I'm like, I know how to swim now, but I'm not brave enough to go in the deep end. And also the deep end, they were like, I don't know how you call it. You know, they were, they were jumping in, like literally jumping in. And I'm like, gosh, I wish I can jump in with them. So I went to the instructor and I saw like, well, the laugh guard. I said, listen, you know, I've been teaching myself to swim and the girl's been teaching me how to swim. I think I can swim now, <laughs> but I'm worried that I would drown if I go in the deep end. So the guy said, okay, so this is what we're going to do. So he took me on the deep end. He said, okay, you jump in this water, right? And I'm going to put a stick at the bottom of the pool. If you struggle, you just hang on to the stick and I'll pull you out. But otherwise, if you feel like you're okay, you bring yourself up. And I said, okay. By this time, few people were watching me. It was like an audience. And my daughter said, mommy, when you jump in, all you have to do is blow bubbles. <laughs> so anyway, I go in the deep end and then I jump in. And I just remember what my daughter said, mommy, blow bubbles. And I blow bubbles and I'm probably kicking as well. I just remember my eyes with the stick. Like, I'm like, uh, I'm not going to hold the stick. I'm going to bring myself back out. <laughs> And I did, and I blew my balls and my head came out. And I'm like, oh my God, I can actually swim. I didn't feel like I can properly swim. I thought, for me to really, really feel that I can swim, I need to go swim in the lake. So when the summer holidays finished, the first thing, like, when we arrived, I just went to the lake and I started swimming in the lake. And I was like, it was just so epic. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can actually swim. I thought swimming was only for summertime. So summertime, we'll spend a lot of time swimming in the lake and things like that. But winter swimming was like not in my radar. I keep thinking, I can't do that. Because, you know, as a black person, you sometimes you limit yourself when you don't see other people the same skin as you doing the stuff. You just feel like, I can't do that. I can't do that. And I run past the girls swimming winter time. I'm like, no, no, Winnie, you can't do that. You can't do that. I keep like just literally holding it up until I was going for a really tough time back in 2018 and running was not doing anything and I was really struggling I'm like oh my god I need to do something and um, by this time it was like the beginning of winter 2019 I was like personally things were just like so tough and uh, I remember my my good friend Gilly she's like Oh, I'll take you. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and she's like, yes, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. I said, no, no, no. I keep pushing it up, pushing it up. And then one morning it happened. She said, yeah, we're going, we're going. And then we went and I had my suit, wet suit on. I had my gloves on. I had, I don't know if I had my booties or not, but I remember having, wearing all my stuff, not to get cold. And I was worried. I'm like, my God, it's what well, if I die? <laughs> it's so cold. You know, I've swum summertime, but never swam winter time. And that day, it was really early morning. And I went to Gilly and Gilly said, you know, we're going to go in. I said, ah, are you sure? She said, yeah, 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 we're going to go in. We went in and like this cold body of water just hit my body. And Sarah, I promise you, I thought I was going to die. And I just thought, Gilly, I'm going to die. She's like, we knew you are not going to die. I said, I'm cold. She's like, and she held my hand. She's like, 
literally just held me like with so much love and she's like you are not gonna die when you just 90 seconds just 90 seconds I don't know what it was I can't explain the universe probably will help me explain one day what it was it felt like this energy just hit my body but I've never felt this thing I think after the 90 second she said yeah yeah you can go I, I literally couldn't wait to get out of the water and then I got out, Sarah, and I felt the, this thing. I'm like, what? I didn't die. I felt like the cold was, it was so amazing. I thought, I'm going to go back in again. She's angry. was by this time. She was shocked. Are you going coming back in? And summertime, I don't enjoy swimming as much. I prefer winter swimming now. But yeah, that's how the winter thing, you know, kicked in. And it's been amazing because... I just kept on with it and it helped me mentally in ways that running hasn't done. And yeah, it, it had just helped me out. The, your description of it, like I can imagine it, you know, being in the water and then endorphin high and just yeah. body, but in a good way. Yeah. So how often are you going swimming? Sometimes there's been weeks where I can go three, four, five times a week. Depends on my mood. As I say, I I struggle with depression, but I find like I'd be going through some, you know, your, your mind is always telling you lies and things like that. And I'll go in the lake and that will be like, it will just clear my thoughts. It just helps me mentally. I mean, physically as well, because your body just gets fit. For me, I do it especially for the mental health that I get from it. It really helps me out. I encourage people to go to counseling and things like that, but it hasn't, counseling hasn't helped in the past for me. And I find this is the one thing that has helped me out. What's the community like up there? I think that's also what helps as well because everybody is so friendly. Everybody's so welcoming and everybody's just there, happy to be there. You know, nobody's thinking like, I used to worry about my stretch marks and things like that. Nobody cares. <laughs> Everybody's just so welcoming. People just see you for who you are. It's just such an amazing community. I've created some amazing friendships. And I think the outdoor community is one of the most welcoming community I've ever met. What advice would you have for other women who want to get into outdoor swimming? What advice would you have for them? My advice would just be as simple as just get out and do it. Just get out there and do it. Whatever you want to put your heart to it. Just if you want to try open water swimming, I would say, you know, go with somebody. I'm confident now I can go on my own. But when you're just starting it, I would say go with someone. But uh, for me, the action, you just have to be active and do it. Sitting at home, I just want people to be out there. Like sitting at home. Sometimes, yeah, you know, cozy warm, the warmth of your house. But there's more benefit by just going out, just doing something. I think we just have to be out there. And for me, I just want also in the black, in the ethnic black, brown community, I just want, there is a lot of representation and I just want people to see a black girl seeing another black girl swimming and can say, oh my gosh, we can swim. (laughs) I just want representation. I just want people to know, know, to, to break these barriers. One of the things which is, is, um, which I've read about is the challenges of hair, having black hair How does that work with open water swimming? Like, do you need to do special stuff to maintain your hair? How can I wear this? I don't get hung up on hair, basically. (laughs) Hair is hair. There was a time I had a huge afro. I'm like, oh, it's too big. I just chopped it off. (laughs) But I know when I've taken my braids out, I tend not to swim with my my afro out because I don't want... It gets kinky. It's hard to, to maintain. So I usually just have my braids, you know, I take my, my braids out and I just plait my hair again, ready for, ready for my lifestyle because uh, for what's important to me is my mental health. What is important to me is my swimming and my walking. So I, I don't stress myself too much when it comes to hair. Uh, sorry, so I, unfortunately, I'm probably the wrong person to ask when it comes to hair. <laughs> One of the things which is written on your on your Instagram is self care, self love, and mental wellness. Being a, yeah. being a mental wellness advocate, tell yeah. us a little bit more about your self care and self love. You know, what are you doing to to care for yourself? 
growing up, I literally never, nobody told me I was beautiful. I never heard that. So it's been a journey to like get to the space where to appreciate myself, to actually give myself love. And that for me is like, and, and a lot of people, I created my business and I called it I Love Me Most. And it took me a long time to realize how important I was. And I think a lot of women, we always put in everybody else's first. And I had to go through like, oh my gosh, life, hangups and things like that. So I just realized how important I am, the me, I'm really important. And I can be very, very selfish about it. Because if I can't function for myself, then what's good I am to people around me? If I need that swim, I'm going to go for that swim. If I need that five minutes just to paint my nails and paint my toes, if that's going to make me happy, then I need to do it. There's days where it's raining or, you know, but you just feel like, oh, your body needs a bit of love. Then sometimes just a little walk in the woods, talking to myself, talking to the universe, talking to the, the trees. That to me is like it's crazy stuff. But to me, that's just, I like to center myself. I find it very important to just find those small, small stuff that you can do to just cheer yourself up, to make yourself feel better, even, and just listening to some nice music, whatever. Everybody's different. And for me, it's like, if I can just go for a quick swim, and it's weird, but sometimes I even go in the lake and just talk. And the good thing with swimming is you don't take your phone. You leave everything behind. It's just you with this body of water. And there's so, there's so much goodness when you come out of it. It's just like, it's just, it's like every time you go, you just feel like you've been cleansed from your problem. You just feel like you've been cleansed. You've been like this electricity of life just given to you. <laughs> it's weird. Sorry, sorry. It's so weird. But that's how I feel. Tell us a little bit more about I Love Me Most. What is your business? What do you do? I sell clothes. I sell ladies' clothes. I sell beautiful ladies' clothes. But I also... I think it's more than clothes. <laughs> I think it's more than clothes because I encourage women to love themselves. And I also encourage women to, to laugh. Just before lockdown, I had a client whose husband sent, the, I think they were having an argument, and her husband gave her some money and said, go to I love me, mama. She, you know, she'll cheer you up. <laughs> Go and cheer yourself up. Or what? I don't know what words to use, but yeah, I, I sell clothes, but I just encourage people to, to appreciate themselves, treat themselves well. And I just want to show people that, you know, that life can be good if you work at it. <laughs> Can you share one of your, your happiest memories that you have? One, oh my gosh, one of my happiest moments. And I know that's a tough you. question. That's quite, that's yeah. good. That's what we want. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, recently or ages ago? Whichever makes you, makes you smile more. Okay, I'll tell you the most recent one. I've not had the best luck in the love department. My boyfriend, James, he's really into ice swimming. I keep saying, no, that's not for me. That's not for me. And then last week, he's like, we're going to go, we're going to go, we're going to go. And I'm like, okay, fine, fine. And so I agreed to go to this, um, for this dip. And we got there. It was cold and icy, like the river's gone, like people were skating on it. He's like, going to dig a heart. I'm like, what do you mean you're going to dig a heart? He's like, yeah, for your first dip, I'm going to dig you a heart. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't quite believe it. I was like, whatever. <laughs> He drew it out and then he started digging and digging and digging. I just stood there. I literally almost cried. I was like, oh my God, he's actually. <laughs> and when the heart started to take shape, it was just one of the most amazing. And then when the heart, the shape came about and, and I could see this heart and I could see the love. And I'm like, nobody <laughs> has, you know, has ever done anything like that for me and so when I got inside this heart I didn't even feel the cold because I was so amazed by this action and I'm like that to stay with me forever <laughs> it's really honestly like 
it will stay with me forever. It was just one of the most beautiful things like that I've experienced in my life. You know, when you've had really bad experiences with men you know, in relationships, but just treat you like this shit. It was just amazing. <laughs> and I knew I was worthy of love, but I didn't know that I was worthy of that kind of intensity of love. I'm like, whoa. Wendy, I'd love to know, who are your role models in open water swimming? Who do you look up to? Oh, my God, Gilly. There isn't anybody else. She's like my hero. She's Gilly MacArthur. I call her my swimming hero. Honestly, she's... If it wasn't for Gilly... I don't know how long it would have taken me. Maybe never. I would have still thought that swimming was only for summertime for me, personally for me, because I thought it's too cold. Black people don't swim in the the cold. But yeah, I think it's Gilly. And I hope and pray that every girl meet a Gilly like I have, because she's, yeah, she's changed my life. Because, you know, through swimming, I found love. (laughs) You know, because I met James for swimming as well, so... Tell us more about Gilly then. How did you meet her and what sort of things does she do? How does she inspire you? We met. This is, another, this is why she's amazing. I don't know about you, Sarah, but I, let's say you, you're in a group of people. It's very rare that, so this will happen. I was swimming and then I saw her. There was a group of them getting in the water and she left the group to come and introduce herself. I was by myself. I was swimming by myself. And she came to me and introduced herself. And I'm like, I would never do that. So it really touched me to the point where every time I'm I'm by the lake or if I see somebody by themselves, I always make a point now to go say hello. Because it's rare, isn't it? For you to be in a group with your friends and to see the loner standing there or doing whatever and just go say hello. And that really, really touched me. That's how, yeah, that's how we, we met. I'm like, what an amazing person. You know, even yesterday, James and I were going to go swimming or he was doing something. I said, he's like, oh, I come with you. I said, no, 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 it's okay, you go. So now I even go to the lake for a swim alone so I can see whoever is there who also needs, you know, just to say hello. Because sometimes you don't know what people are going through. And sometimes that hello helps. Just a simple hello helped me in the past. A kind hello, a kind smile. Sometimes I go on walks and see, you know, just say hello to people because I know there's people who are lonely out there. There's people who sometimes by working in my shop, I also learned there's lots of lo- lonely people out there. Sometimes the, the only hello they'll receive is when they come in my shop. So, yeah. How have you been coping during COVID with all the sort of the lockdowns and the challenges that that's sort of introduced? Financially, it hasn't been great because the shop is closed and I don't want to be online because I've chosen not to, you know, my, 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 my website is online, but I'm not plugging my website because I've had my shop and I've been selling clothes for a long time. And I know people buy clothes to go somewhere. You know, my customer used to come to me to buy clothes, to go on cruises, to go on holidays and things like that. And at the moment, I haven't been feeling great selling clothes because I feel like people got nowhere to go. And I don't want to force, because I know a lot of them are buying out of pity. On a business level, it's been quite, it's been tough. But on the flip side, I know I'm still in a better position because I've got a home. I look back at people back home in Africa who are struggling. People are still suffering. So I tend not to moan because I know people who are, going through tougher things than me. So I've got the lake, I've got beautiful sceneries and I've got a lot of walks where I live. So I can just go out for a walk and things like that. So I try not to mourn because I've met people who don't have, don't have anything. So I'm all right. I'm actually okay. You've met quite a few um, interesting people this year as well. Did you? Uh, you I met have, them? yeah, <laughs> I have. <laughs> Do you just want to share some, some of the incredible women that you've met up with? I've met lots and lots and lots of women. I've met Eden. Have you met? I don't know if you know Eden. If you I haven't. If you... I haven't met Eden, but go on. Who's Eden? The, the transgender swimmer. She's, she's in London. 
it was amazing meeting her. And I've also met Rianne from Black Girls Hike. And I took her for a swim. And yeah, there's a few people that I've been meeting. Yeah. But it was nice. But oh, I love, love that. Yeah, meeting Rianne was epic because, oh my gosh, she refused to go in that lake. It's too cold. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. Like, honestly, I, she's like, it's too cold. It's too cold. I'm like, we are going in the lake. You don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then she enjoyed it. I think she enjoyed it. She didn't admit it, but I know I know she she liked it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been amazing. And I've I've met so many people. I still, you know, there's so many people still that I, you know I want to meet and take them for a swim. But I also know there's a few people who have messaged me, uh, some black ladies who have messaged me who said, Winnie, I want to meet you, but I can't swim and it breaks my heart. It just really breaks my heart. I just encourage people to learn to swim. I hope everybody can discover this joy. <laughs> Winnie, if people want to follow along with your journey and want to meet up with you, go swim with you in Lake Windermere, you know, how should they reach out? How should they get in contact? You can email me, I love me most at gmail.com or winniepoiti at gmail.com. But I'm also on Insta, Winnie Poiti. Well, I'll say ne- when I can travel again and I'm heading up to the Lake District. Please, oh. please, <laughs> please. I'll be, I'll say I'll be coming to meet you to have a swim. <laughs> I call them sw- swim meet now. <laughs> swim meet. Swim meet. Let's do- yeah let's do a swim meet <laughs> let's absolutely we will be doing a swim meet but Winnie before we go I'd love for you to leave our listeners with just final words of advice and wisdom for other women out there who want to get into swimming or follow their passion but maybe they're just feeling a little bit scared or a little bit intimidated and they don't necessarily want to take the plunge you know what is your advice and what are your top tips my top tip that I tell I wish I came up with it I didn't but when it comes to swimming, a lot of people say, oh, but I don't know how, or oh, it's too cold, or whatever. We say, once you're in, it's a win. And it's just the getting in that, you know, I don't, even if it's walking, whatever, once you're in it, just do it. It's a win. And lots of people say, how long are you in the water for? It doesn't matter how long you're in the water for. As long as you just get in, that's a win. Because, you know, sometimes the hardest bit is getting out of bed at seven o'clock in the morning. But it just get out and do it. And also, this is the time to do it. Now is the time. Let's not wait. Absolutely. Once you're in, it is a win. The win, yeah. It is a win. <laughs> Winnie, thank you so much for coming on Tough Girl Podcast to share more about your joy and passion for swimming. It's been amazing to speak to you. Hey Tribe, I hope you enjoyed that podcast episode with Winnie. It was just so full of joy and happiness. It, I don't know how you can not be inspired after listening to Winnie and wanting to give wild swimming and open water swimming a go. But my name is Sarah Williams. I'm the host of the Tough Girl podcast and the founder of Tough Girl Challenges, which is all about motivating and inspiring you to step outside your comfort zone, to try new things. And it's also about increasing the amount of female role models in the media. If you want to learn more about the mission, myself and all the amazing women that I've spoken to in the past and future guests, then please do go check out toughgirlchallenges.com, which is basically the main central hub where everything happens. So quite an interesting month in March, I'm actually running a challenge called the March Daily Mile Challenge, which I'm doing in partnership with Innovate. So how this basically came about was Innovate sent me a pair of their trainers back in early February. And I got sent them so I could review them, test them out, you know, um, and post about it on, on the socials. And basically in February, I was just being very lazy and very unmotivated and struggling to get outside, struggling to exercise. And I thought, right, I've I've got to do something. I've got to make a change. So I came up with the idea to do the March Daily Mile, to run one mile every single day in March. I reached back out to Innovate and said, hey, look, this is how I'm going to um, test out your trainers. I'm also, I'd love to get my community involved, the Tough Girl Tribe, you know, share it, do on the socials. I was wondering if, you know, if you wanted to get involved, maybe offer a few prizes, stuff like that, basically. And they came back to me and they were super keen about working with me, which is always amazing. Like I always feel like really flattered. And they came back and said, yep, yeah, let's partner up. So they sent out to me all of this amazing running gear. So I've got like running leggings, running shorts. I've got 
multiple pairs of socks. I've got a running vest. I've got this amazing waterproof jacket, which weighs like nothing, but this is in this gorgeous blue color. I've also got like a running top as well with thumb holes, which is amazing. So, so yeah, so super exciting. They sent me another pair of trainers to wear as well. And that's what I've been doing in March. So I started March Daily Mile Challenge, working in partnership with Innovate, running one mile every single day, testing out their gear and doing a review. Plus, they are also offering a discount to all Tough Runners of 20%, which is amazing. So if you use Tough Girl 20 at checkout, you will get 20% discount from their gear, which is epic. So that's what's been happening with me. Now, if you're listening to the podcast and thinking, how did I not know about this challenge? Like, I, why am I only just hearing about it now? You have to come and follow me on social media. Come and find me on Instagram at Tough Girl Challenges. I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. Actually, I probably don't share on Pinterest that much. But yeah, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook. And that's where I share more about the challenges. So if you want to be kept up to date, follow along on social media. A massive thank you again to everybody who's been listening to the Tough Girl podcast. Massive thank you to to everyone who's telling their friends about it i really do appreciate all of your support the tough girl podcast is sponsorship and ad free and that's thanks to the monthly financial support of patrons to support the tough girl podcast please do go and visit patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com forward slash tough girl podcast take care lots of love and i'll speak to you soon bye